Hey everyone, this is Undercover Comics with a recap and review of Once in Future, issue number one from Boom Studios. The story is written by Kieran Gillen, illustrated by Dan Mora, with color by Tamar Bonvillain, and letters by Ed Dukeshire. I hope you enjoy. The story begins at an archaeological site in Cornwall, Great Britain. An archaeologist and a mysterious woman are meeting about a recent discovery excavated from a lake bed during the heat wave. The artifact is beautiful, well-preserved, and the archaeologist believes that the artifact is from the 5th or 6th century. He also believes the woman to be a university doctor who has arrived to authenticate and appraise the find. The mysterious woman immediately confirms the authenticity of the artifact and makes a phone call. Shortly after, however, three right-wing nationalists enter the scene and strong-arm the artifact. As for the archaeologist, game over. We jump to a retirement home in Somerset where an old woman is aggressively staring out the window. While fixated on the outside world, she's also listening to a news report about the situation. The other seniors are not interested in the news report and elect to change the channel. But this is when we learn a little bit more about the old woman. Not only is she interested in the report, but she vows to break the fingers of anyone who changes the channel. I mean, grandma's not playing. While listening to the report, she learns that the artifact was stolen from the excavation site. At this moment, we realize the old woman is not only familiar with the artifact, but also has a history with it. The orderlies begin to make their rounds and request the seniors go to bed. Playing innocent, however, she requests 10 more minutes to walk the grounds and have her final cigarette. From here, we cut to a man and a woman on a date in Bristol. His name is Duncan, and the date is clearly not going well. He's nervous, so he's spilling his drinks, and he's making a fool of himself. But she's also going pretty hard on him. In the middle of his apology, he gets a call from his grandmother's retirement home. Turns out, she's just wandered off. With the revelation of his missing grandmother, his date shifts from frustrated and angry to concerned. Duncan explains that his grandmother is not senile. In fact, she's aggressively independent and has lived on her own since the age of 15. But she's never done this before, and he has no idea what to do. At this time, he gets a second call, this time from his grandmother. She tells him that she snuck off to avoid questions, but she's got a problem and she needs his help. So, of course, he bails on his date to go track down his missing grandmother. He arrives to find his grandmother uncovering a hatch. Now, within this hatch is an arsenal of weapons. Duncan is shocked, but his grandmother is relieved. She explains that she was a monster hunter, well, at least until she ran out of monsters to hunt. Just then, she notices the muffled sound of dog barking, and the color of the sky has suddenly changed from pink to green. She realizes that these are the signs of a questing beast, which is basically a giant beast on all fours with a giant snake-like head and a belly full of dogs. Now, his grandmother needs to find a solution, so she tells Duncan to run, which lures the questing beast away and affords her with enough time to find a weapon. She arms Duncan with a spear, but upon seeing the spear, the questing beast stops, then turns around, and then runs away. Now, Duncan is pretty amped up at this point, and now that he's armed, he wants to chase the monster, but his grandmother warns him against this, she explains that you should never be obsessed with chasing monsters. She also explains that someone has killed to steal the artifact known as the scabbard, and therefore they must be stopped. Additionally, the questing beast is a beast of destiny, and thus can't be killed. At this point, Duncan has grown hysterical, trying to make sense of a nonsensical situation, and demands answers, but he's not really satisfied with the answers that his grandmother provides. His grandmother explains that she needs a ride to Glastonbury, but Duncan insists that they return to the retirement home. At this point, his grandmother suggests very strongly that he comply with her request. Duncan doesn't believe that his grandmother will shoot him, but he's wrong, because as we know, grandma don't play. So, on the way to Glastonbury, his grandmother explains that the scabbard belonged to an old warlord, and it has special healing powers but it was stolen from the warlord by his sister and thrown into a lake. Soon after, the warlord was stabbed and killed by his own son. She explains that the scabbard is much more important than the famous sword that it protects. She reveals that the sword is called Excalibur 
and it was loaned to the warlord by the women of the lake. And the warlord is none other than King Arthur. She further reveals the darker, lesser known history of King Arthur as a conqueror. His grandmother believes that someone is going to use the scabbard to resurrect King Arthur. She explains that a prophecy states that King Arthur will return in Britain's darkest hour. But this prophecy could be interpreted in two different ways. First, it could mean that he could return because it's Britain's darkest hour, or it could mean that his return could cause it. First of all, I want to start by saying this comic was a pleasant surprise. I thought the story was excellent, it was relevant, well paced, and the stakes were clear. The author revealed details as they became necessary, but kept me wanting more. At no time was I confused or bored. Additionally, the character development was great. My grandmother is super important to me, and despite the violence, I thought the relationship between Duncan and his grandmother was sweet. The artwork was fantastic, and the color palette was awesome. This is a darker story, so the use of bright colors was a nice touch. The pink skies, the purple vegetation, the bright orange hair, and the use of contrasting colors really made the images pop. At no point did I feel the images were oversaturated or dull. This was a very strong start to the series and I'm looking forward to more. I give the art a nine, the story a nine, and the impact a nine and a half. With that said, I'm gonna wrap this up. This is Undercover Comics. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this issue, go grab the next one. And until next time, peace.